So you know HTML, CSS and JavaScript and you've been creating very simplistic websites using them. Please, 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 please continue if and only if that's the case. But you want to create applications that are far more than these simplistic applications. You want to create an app that has a lot of complex application logic, a lot of interactivity whenever the user interacts with your application. So for this, you end up copy pasting a lot of the elements that you're using in your application. And this just creates a mess in your folder structure or in your files, because any change that you need to make in your buttons, for, for example, you need to change it everywhere across all your HTML files. So life is a mess in general for you right now. Well, don't break a sweat because we have React. React is a JavaScript framework. No, 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 no. React is a JavaScript library that allows you to create user interfaces for the web using components. Let's break that down. A JavaScript library. We write React in JavaScript, which means it's very, very important for you to know the basics of JavaScript very, very well. These include DOM manipulation using JavaScript, object destructuring, arrow functions, array methods such as maps, filters, reduce, fetching data from an API, or async programming in general that includes callbacks, promises and of course a sync await all of this is very very important for you to know before you build any react application create user interfaces with react we can create user interfaces using something known as jsx which is very very similar to html except a few key differences for example inline styles are not text anymore rather they need to be a javascript object and that, that's just the way it is another one is that we cannot use JavaScript reserved words inside JSX. That is, we cannot use a um, class because class any HTML class that is there will, ha will have to be converted into something known as class name. We cannot use for because that's again a JavaScript reserved keyword. So we'll have to use HTML for uh, for input elements and so on. The rules of JSX are actually very simple. You must always return a single element. That is, you cannot have two adjacent elements inside a JSX. We must close all the tags that are being used inside the JSX. We cannot have any open tags because that will lead to a syntax error and that'll again stop our program from running. And then again, we must camel case all our HTML attributes. Or better yet, if you're just confused and you want to convert your HTML to JSX, just use a HTML to JSX converter, which there are plenty of tools to do that for you. The benefit of using JSX to render our element is that we can have the rendering logic or the interaction logic of the element right next to the markup of the element that makes it very convenient for us to bind together the interaction with the right elements before this we have been keeping html and javascript separate that is our interaction logic separate from our markup but jsx allows us to co-locate them together which is very very beneficial and makes our life a lot easier now finally components components are reusable blocks or elements that can be used across our applications by just simply exporting them out of the file in which they are defined that makes it very convenient to reuse any component or any element that you have created and use them anywhere in an application so now it must make very clear sense to you why i said that react is a javascript library to create user interfaces for the web using components all right all that is cool but how and where do I write this JSX? And how do I create user component? And how do I create components for my user interface? Well, a long, long time ago, React was written in something known as class-based components. But those days are long gone and have been replaced by much simpler and much more developer-friendly functional components. As a React developer, most of the time will be spent writing these functional components or probably designing them. Function components are normal JavaScript functions, except that they always return a valid JSX. That is a requirement for any functional component. These functions are what then we can export and use it across our applications inside other functional components. Let's see this by actually scaffolding a React project and seeing how the functional components are used inside it. Let's go. Now the fastest way to scaffold a React project or create a React app is by actually using something known as Vite. So let's go ahead and use that. Since I always use PNPM. Since I always use PNPM, that's what I'll be using in this case as well. And create Vite. Let's name our project 
first react and we are presented and we are presented with a lot, lot of options right now so we'll be using the react framework or which is technically a library and i'll be showing this example in plain javascript so that everyone can follow through and let's go and that's it that's how simple it was i can install everything and then i can start my application by running pnpm run dev and my application is already running on 5173 let's see how it's looking like and tada that's our application let's see what this actually means on a code level and now this is how every react project looks like there is this function running which creates the root of our react project because remember that every react project can only have a single element returned from its jsx and then this single element is what contains all our applications so everything is actually nested inside the single application that is inside this app and that's what we are doing over here so react dom creates an element in the root of our project and it uh, so the, the way it does is that there is a root element inside our index.html let's see let's check that out so there's a root element inside our index.html which the which we get by the id and then we render our whole application and that's how react actually works under the hood well let's not get too much into that and let's see what's happening inside the app.jsx let me get rid of all of this code so this is what our application looks like currently right now. So I've got rid of everything and it's only a high right now. So app is actually our first functional component. This is what a functional component looks like. It's, it's a simple JavaScript function, except that it returns a valid JSX. So let's create our first functional component. We'll be naming it child. The naming will make sense to you later. So let's go ahead and create a file called child.jsx and it will be a simple JavaScript function which will be exported from here. Export default function child which will be returning a text of child. That's it. Very simple. And then what we can do is we can actually import that child function component inside the app. So now you see we actually have imported the child inside the app.js app.jsx and the app.jsx is actually being rendered on the root using this function so you have a parent component that is this app is the parent parent component and the child is of course the child component Alright, so so far we have seen how we can create our own ui functional component that is this child let's see how we can add interactivity inside our application because that is a very important part of any user interface so the way of doing that is very similar to what we used to do inside html we need to handle events such as on click or on mouse enter except that these attributes will be camel cased and the function that we'll be using inside to handle these events will actually be present inside our app logic or inside our functional component. And that's where the beauty of JSX comes in. We can co-locate our application logic with our markup. That's what this is all about. So over here, uh, let's replace this with a normal button. Let's see how we can add a on click. Since we need to camel case it, on click with a small c becomes an on click with a capital C. And we'll name it handle click. And let's see how we can do that. So function handle click and then we'll be simply logging out wild ones. Let's see how it's looking like. Click wild ones. Click, 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 click. And that's how simple it is to actually add interactivity inside our React application. Everything's very declarative. You don't need to get into too much of the implementation details if you're just building user interfaces. And yeah, it just makes your life very simple. All right. All that is cool, but how do I manage local data or local state that is present inside my component? How do I manipulate that? Well, I know, I know. Since we are inside JavaScript, we can simply create a local variable 
and update that and tada we have a updated state okay okay let's try it out let count is equal to 1 and let's present the count over here and let's add it let's add 1 to the count and let's see let's see whether this works or not click 1 it's still 1 again 1 how is it 1 <laughs> okay you have jokes uh well for the Re for react to actually update any state or update the ui rather it needs to re-render that specific component so in this case the button component will be need will be needed to re-render and only then will the ui update um but in this case there are exactly two problems which are stopping us one is that using a local variable doesn't actually trigger a re-render and the second is that even if we somehow did manage to get a re-render the local variable would again be initialized to its initial value that is 1 and that's what will be used in the ui so what do we use in this case well that's where we come across something known as something special known as use state now use state is a hook that is predefined inside react um okay okay but what the hell are hooks hooks again are simple javascript functions with a special twist the twist of using a hook is that it can only and only be called inside the top level of a functional component it cannot be called inside any other function or any other for loops or any other loops or any 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 other place so use state is a special hook that is written by the react team which will help us in managing our local state so whenever we try to update the state that we get from the use state hook react will trigger a re-render and not only that it will also persist the value of that state inside the component let's see how it looks like let's get rid of this count and rather we'll be using something known as use state and this is the syntax of a use state so use state returns us an array which the the first one of which is a count or the actual state that we are trying to store and the second one is a setter of that state meaning that we cannot directly update states using plus ones or any how manipulate the state we need to manipulate them inside the setter function which is which is provided inside this array in the second position so let's see how the how that will replace this set count plus 1 so for this we'll be needing to do set count and then count plus 1 and let's set the initial value to 0 now if you try to click this button let's see what happens 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 and that's how simple it is to actually manipulate state inside react now there are also a lot of other important hooks inside react which have their own specific use cases such as use ref or use reducer or use effect which you can probably read up in your free time from the react talks that's all about managing state inside react Okay, okay, okay. All that is amazing, but is there a way for me to pass data from my parent component to my child component? That is, for example, if I'm fetching data in my app dot JSX, is there a way for me to share that data with my child, or will I have to actually present all the data inside this app dot JSX? Well, again, that's where the beauty of React comes in. You can actually pass any type of data that you want to the child component using something known as props and then use that data simply inside your child now whenever those props actually change the component the child component will re react, react to those changes and update the ui and that's how beautiful it is so for example in this case if i get const name over here that i'm fetching from some uh, api like spirit and i pass that name over here as a prop then you can simply use it inside over here using the props keyword and then use it by referencing the props and then the name and that's how we pass props from one parent component to a child component so passing data can actually be very useful for example consider in this case that we want to have a very huge component over here 
a very huge data list over here that we're getting from an API and that we want to present over here. Instead of presenting the whole thing over here, we can create a separate component and just pass in the data to that component uh, and let that functional component handle the user interface for all that data that we have fetched from the API. So that's what makes uh, it very easy for us to separate our concerns and manage functional components inside our application. Yay! Now that's all you actually need to get started with building a React application. So get started with scaffolding your React projects and building really awesome applications because no one, no one ever got better by simply watching YouTube videos. Remember, you're